Eventually, in every smartphone's life, no matter how well you take care of it, it becomes obsolete because the manufacturer stops supporting it. If you have an Apple device, this is usually a bit longer, but that's mostly because Apple doesn't just make money whenever they sell you the device, they continue to make money through the App Store and through services long after they sold it to you. This gives them the direct incentive to prolong the usable life of every iDevice, to the point where this year whenever iOS 14 launched, it came to devices as old as the original iPhone SE and the 6S line. That's five years of continuous software support. Compare that to most Android manufacturers where they only make money whenever they sell you your device, and you'll see things like monthly security and OS updates drop off after about two to three years. That brings us to this though. This is the original OnePlus One. It's six years old and it's running Android 10. So how is that exactly? Two words, open source. One of the key features of Android has always been its open source nature and how that allows anyone to make their own operating system based on it. And that isn't just limited to big companies like Samsung and Sony or even companies who actually manufacture the devices themselves. As a matter of fact, whenever OnePlus launched the One, they weren't even the ones who made the operating system at all. They worked with Cyanogen, who at the time was hands down the most popular third-party ROM creator, and launched their flagship killer with Cyanogen mod on it right out of the box. While Cyanogen and OnePlus did have to uh, <clears throat> part ways after this, this partnership did help cement the legitimacy of third-party ROM makers, but also drove further excitement for the One and the OnePlus as a whole from people within the ROM community. Shortly after Steve Kondik left Cyanogen in 2016 after all of um, that, Cyanogen dissolved and a group of people decided to continue on under the name Lineage. And that brings us all the way back to today. Because who is it that got Android 10 on the OnePlus One? That would be Lineage. So now that we're back in the present, how do you get Lineage OS on the OnePlus One? I'll have links in the description below to Lineage's website where they have all the files that you'll need as well as links to other things and their own step-by-step -step directions. But also I'll have another video right there that'll be my step-by-step -step process to do it. That way you know what everything is supposed to look like. In the meantime though, the condensed version is this. There are two files that you need to download from Lineage and a third technically optional but highly recommended file from OpenG Apps that you'll use your computer to install on the phone. Following that, any updates happen just the same as with any other Android release through over-the-air updates that happen just all on your phone. Once you get Lineage installed though, there's one other swap that I'd highly recommend doing, and that's a battery swap. Because at the end of the day, no OS update is going to make a six-year-old battery perform not like a six-year-old battery. Following iFixit's guides, it took under 15 minutes for me to do it myself. iFixit also happens to sell a battery for $25, but in addition to buying that one, I saw another one on eBay for $11 that was shipped from within the United States. They were both ordered on the same day, and they both happened to arrive on the same day as well. So I'd say it's a safe call to go ahead and save yourself $14, because the only difference that I can see between them is that the iFixit one seems to be just a couple of months newer. So while I've got both of them to choose from, I'll go ahead and use the slightly newer one. But like I said, you can save yourself 14 bucks by going with the eBay one. Battery testing before and after the swap shows a night and day difference with about two times the usable life in both benchmarks and idle tests. When you think about it, that makes total sense too because it's a six year old battery that was in a device that was daily driven by me very hard and hasn't been charged in about three years. The battery isn't the only thing I've benchmarked either. I got scores for it in PC Mark, 3D Mark, Geekbench, and Speed Test. For comparison, I tested my old OnePlus 3 and my OnePlus 8 Pro, just so we could see how it holds up to older devices and today's flagship devices. While the results aren't surprising at all, they do help give some scale to the next thing that I'm about to say. And that's that the One doesn't feel this many times slower or worse than the OnePlus 8 Pro. These massive differences in benchmark really only come into play on actions that are stressful to the processor. For normal daily activities and light gaming, the One honestly still feels totally usable. It's not snappy, but it's not slow either. And I think that that speaks volumes about what Lineage have managed to do with their OS. Sure, in things like 3D Mark, the One suffers from low frame rates and lackluster performance, but benchmarks are meant to push your device to the limits to see how it performs at the high end. And most things that you do never even come close to that. So after daily driving the OnePlus One again for a few days, what's my verdict? Well, 
With the 1080p display at 401 pixels per inch, the display doesn't look too bad by today's standards, except that it's an LCD panel. So you aren't going to get the deep blacks that we're used to have today's displays. So even though it's got a higher resolution display than something like the iPhone SE with its 326 pixels per inch, I'd rather have that due to its IPS LED display that allows for much better dynamic range. Additionally, you'd be mistaken for thinking that the earpiece on the one is an amplified one that can double as a front-facing stereo speaker. The audio comes in the form of these dual mono bottom-firing speakers. The one does have a headphone jack still, so if you've got any decent earbuds laying around, that makes a much better watching experience than the tinny sounding pocket link collectors you'd be listening to otherwise. My biggest complaint going back to the one from the 8 Pro though, isn't any of that. Honestly, after a solid 5 years of daily driving phones with fingerprint sensors, the time I spend entering my pen every time I unlock it is the single most noticeable delay. The speed difference between 5G and 4G LTE where I live isn't too big. The phone still has the ability to make it to the end of the day with enough battery power to watch YouTube before plugging it in for the night. The lack of a smart unlock feature makes it feel slower than any of the other parts of the phone though. So, my final verdict? Android 10 on the OnePlus One is a totally usable experience. It performs much better than I expected out of a six-year-old device, and it shows me what features I actually care about, and which ones are just nice-to-haves. While this review shouldn't make you want to rush out and buy a six-year-old flagship device just to see what it's like, it should let you know that there's still plenty of life left in your three- to four-year-old ones. Provided, that is, it's one of the ones that a third-party ROM manufacturer supports. And while the One has its issues still, like a camera that's lackluster by today's standards and no biometric unlock, going to something like the OnePlus 3 instead can get you more up-to-date features like an AMOLED screen that looks much nicer, in addition to things like moving the headphone jack from the top to the bottom for less awkward pocketability. Add all of that together with a thumbprint sensor and swapping USB micro B for the USB-C with dash charge, and you've got a much better overall experience. The trade-off with all of this is that it's a much harder phone to open to change the battery, and also I couldn't actually get it to run with stock Lineage OS at all. I had to actually go into the install files and manually edit things in ways that the devs told me they cannot recommend, but I only did that because no matter what the devs suggested I do, I couldn't actually get it to run. So this isn't just a situation where your mileage may vary, it's one where your mileage hopefully varies. Because not only do the devs suggest that you never do that, I also suggest that no one else ever does this, because with all of this done to it, it couldn't even perform normal over-the-air updates. Every single time I tried, it bricked the device. I only did it to begin with, so I could get a more apples-to-apples -apples comparison of the two devices running on the same operating system. That having been said, if you're like me and you've got an old OnePlus One sitting around collecting dust, maybe give Lineage OS a try. But let me know, down in the comments, do you think it's worthwhile to try to get another couple of years out of older devices? Do you think that it's much more worthwhile to just get newer hardware every one or two years? But for now, I'll see you next time. And until then, have a good one. That brings us to this, though. This is the original OnePlus One, and <laughs> Still good.